What's going on guys? This is Ben from Pitch Black Forge once again. I'm in the park, not far from my house, right next to the tracks. Uh, should be leaving in a couple days for this for this journey to Wisconsin to go make some swords, axes, and sledgehammers. But I woke up a couple days ago with a bit of a tickle in my throat, so the trip's postponed until I feel a little bit better. So if I cough, that's the explanation for that. I wanted to go over today what I'm gonna be carrying with me on this trip, which is kind of a medium loadout. I'm only be gone for a little bit less than a month, but I wanted to be comfortable, so I'm bringing a full-size camping backpack. I've got that on me right now. Step back, turn around really quick, do a little pirouette, and I'm gonna go through what I've got with me. That's a 45 liter Arctrix camping bag with a few alterations. Uh, this model is discontinued. I got it. Uh, the year after they changed the name for this one. So I got it on on sale deeply discounted Otherwise, I might not have gotten this one because it had mesh side pockets When I first got it and of course like I mentioned in another video those blew out within the first year of being out on the road uh, Because having steel canteens and these mesh pockets just rubbing up against trains throwing it off with moving moving stock um, and crawling through the brush it's just those are just gonna blow out so uh, those have been replaced I sewed on some thousand denier Cordura there is a bit of heavy bungee here up at the top that helps things cinch up and these have been sewn into place for years now I've had this pack for I think seven or eight years I took it backpacking around Europe that's sewn together with black artificial sinew which is a uh, pretty damn bomb proof stuff you can find it in most leather working departments it's really thick uh, continuous strands of fiber a lot like dental floss but much much thicker you can peel that into three strands train coming by apropos CSX a lot of coil cars and Crash train heading north, empty towards Philly. I'm gonna pause this for a second and come back. All right, that's funny. Train's gone now. Um, so that's uh, the first big alteration that was done to this pack. Um, it's been to hell and back, so I've had to do some some minor patching to it. Uh, see here, there's a small patch also sewn on with artificial sinew. Um, I think I'd taken some Cordura when I went to Europe just in anticipation of things getting busted. That hole is from lemmings. Um, turns out they're not mythical creatures. They look like little fancy hamsters. And if you are way north <clears throat> in Norway, say above the Arctic Circle camping in your tent, they will eat holes in the mosquito net, come in, get to your food, and uh, eat holes in all of your gear, rain gear, backpack, everything. And when they leave, they, they won't go out the hole they made. They'll make another one. So yeah, this thing's scarred up from lemmings of all things. And I've added a couple panels of hook and loop here and here, just for morale patches. And uh, yeah, that's just mostly an aesthetic consideration. This one, uh, Crom laughs before wins. If you don't get that reference, you didn't grow up in the eighties. And this one is a leather patch from Ed's Manifesto, Ed Calderon made by Payne Leather and Tool. And it's got a slit in the Velcro on the back so that you can hide tiny tools in there. It's your guess what I've got with me. Um, but if that needs to be gotten rid of, I can just rip it off the hook and loop panel and toss it. Although uh, those patches aren't in production anymore, so it'd be a damn shame. I've got two water bottles on the outside, um, a bigger clean canteen. This will have a climb grade carabiner securing it in. I sandblasted this one and painted it so it's a little bit more camo and the other one's just a small one it's got the, the stock black paint job I'll carry with me uh, a bigger collapsible water bottle under the floating lid and usually under there is also where my hoodie is and I'll wrap the hoodie around that bottle but um before getting into the insides of the pack what I've got there I want to go over what I'm carrying on my person right now what I'm wearing I'm wearing all black, except for a green t-shirt. This is really predictable for me. Um, definitely stands out socially, but that is what it is. Uh, in my pocket, I've got a small 
compass made to clip to your watch, but I never clipped to anything. This one's made by Sunto. It's got a dial on it. It's handy as hell, glows in the dark. And I've pretty much always got that with me. There is a diamond sharpening card, size of a credit card, inside my wallet, along with a military issue P38 little folding can opener. I always have one of those as well. Um, you can get like off-brand ones at a camping store. Um, they're usually a little bit bigger than the old military issue ones. But from my experience, those things are made out of monkey metal. They don't last very long at all. And they actually cost more. I know the B-38 used to be like 50 cents. Now you probably have to pay $1.50 for them. Any army surplus store will have those. And I recommend getting the, the real military issue one. You never know when you need to open a can and uh, it doesn't weigh much of anything. Just stick it inside your wallet. They will pop open if you put them on your keychain. So there's some chance that the little hook will pop out and then put a hole in your pocket. So I, I never carry it on, on my keychain or a lanyard. I just put it in with a a little velcro pocket inside of inside of my wallet uh, i'm carrying also uh, a couple of bracelets this is called a gtfo it's an elastic band with a few tungsten beads it's a glass breaker for getting out of say a car you get into a wreck just an emergency escape tool and I don't make that one. You can find those online. GTFO. Look for the real one. Uh, I know uh, maybe Searpick. ITS carries them. Um, Imminent Threat Solutions and a few other brands should carry them as well. This is a stash bracelet that I made for myself and now they're up for pre-order on my website. It's a bit of leather folded into thirds with a snap. They come with a flexible polymer liner on the inside so if you put any tiny tools in here like shims or a tiny key, then they won't imprint on the leather on the outside. You put that behind the polymer, but it's also big enough to put a single tightly folded bill in case you get robbed or some other horrible thing happens. I've at least got 50 bucks in my on my wrist at all times. Um, so those are neat. I've got, um, what else? Carrying. A necklace it's also made for self-defense handmade brass beads on a 950 pound kevlar cord i make these they're called the last resort necklace and they are that it's a holdout weapon it's a flail in an emergency uh just a last ditch effort to defend yourself if you've got one and you think you're going to get into an altercation put it in your pocket and let the string hang out the side you don't want to get strangled strangled by your own necklace and i usually have a knife inside my waistband as well that I make uh, called the Gaijin Shuriken, but that is right now strapped to this backpack because I make a couple different sheaths for them. I've got one that tucks inside my belt and there's another one clipped onto the backpack right now. It's a Molly compatible clip on a Kydex sheath. This is it. I've got it dangling. Since everything's black, it blends in. You wouldn't really notice it, but it's made to draw underhand in a pinch and it's handmade out of 80 CRV2, which is a really bomb-proof alloy. Epoxy stabilized cord wrapped handle. It's point driven, so it's sharp, but it's not a field knife. And uh, yeah, thermoformed Kydex sheath. It's got a Cerakote finish, so it's rust proof, except for the tiny ribbon along the edge where it's sharp. Um, but that should last absolutely for fucking ever. That's a bunch of stuff that I've made. Also always carry a wristwatch. Um, it's nice to be able to tell the time without getting dragged into internet land by looking at your phone all the time or just put your phone away. <clears throat> so you're not walking around with it in a dodgy neighborhood uh, looking like a treat. Let's get inside the backpack. Okay, first, first things first, first things first. First zipper, first thing you can grab. This is my IFAC individual first aid kit. I've got a smaller little case in here with band-aids, super glue, uh, antacid, headache pills and stuff. But this is a tourniquet put together with a rubber band, Sharpie for marking the time. I always carry one of these in my everyday carry bag. There's <clears throat> Z-Pack gauze and, uh, and a compression bandage that both have um, coagulating agents in them so if I get really badly hurt a little bit of coach wrap in here for helping secure those things a little bit better and a couple gloves uh, the gloves aren't sterile but 
that's not your your main priority if you you know if you're got some arterial bleeding going on so I got a little uh, this is a mystery ranch bag I was looking for one that was real bright so I can grab it anytime even if I need to tell someone else what to look for in my bag really quick it's top zipper orange bag there you go bandana blaze orange uh, uses a signal it's got some reflectors on it mostly this is just a tie on the outside of my backpack um, uses a sweat rag tie on the outside of the pack if I get stuck walking somewhere like along a highway uh, just as a little bit of a safety measure so I don't get hit by a car there's tiny regular first aid kit um, just band-aids a little medical tape um, ibuprofen that sort of thing so that's top zipper and this had um, metal zipper pulls on it when I got it the backpack did I clipped those off with a pair of dykes set of diagonal wire cutters and replaced all the zipper pulls with thin cordage with knots on the end I know this bag pretty well so I can open it up in the dark but if I need to find it in the dark there is one glow marker on the outside it's an old d20 for playing D&D &D that I drilled a hole in and put a lanyard on um, so I need to find my stuff in the dark I can just charge that with a flashlight or just from being out here in the sun, it'll glow for several hours after nightfall. And if I don't want to be noticed by this thing at all, even though it's up against my neck, I can just take it off of the grab handle. All right, second top zipper pocket, flashlight. Uh, this is a stream light, tactical flashlight. I mentioned this before, it's nice to have one really good flashlight. This has got two settings. It doesn't have a flash, but it has a high beam and regular. Even the regular is pretty damn bright. They come with like a belt clip or a pocket clip and I've never liked those things very much. They they always end up failing on me. Um, I don't trust them. So since I'm a knife maker and I make a lot of things, I made a small Kydex holster with a pull the dot soft loop. Um, so it's got pretty damn perfect retention and I can clip this onto my belt or onto uh, the waist belt of the pack anytime I need to so if you're not familiar with pull the dot snaps they don't come undone accidentally you have to orient this little dimple in the right direction and then you can pop it open so it won't ever accidentally come undone on you yeah good flashlight radio which is a new thing for me and it's on from this morning when I was scanning toiletries, toothbrush, soap, that sort of thing. Uh, I got a little pair of clippers since uh, I like to keep my head shaved. I found a, a pair that just have a, a lever on them and not a button so they won't accidentally turn on. Another glow marker. Uh, if I need to stash my stuff off trail, sometimes I'll charge one of these things, throw it in the weeds where I can see it, but it wouldn't be easily noticed by someone else so I know where to head off trail to go find my stuff that's been stashed in the brush. Um, doesn't weigh much of anything so it's it's worth having book light something almost no one else would carry it's nice to have a secondary light source and this one most will be using for reading because i read a damn lot and speaking of books they're down in another pocket but this is uh electronic stuff in a tyvek envelope this is just a shipping envelope but they're waterproof they're pretty damn tough and i've got a power bank uh extra ziploc bag to put my phone in and a bunch of charging cables that are all uh, put together with a piece of Velcro. Also got a pair of earbuds in there for listening to the scanner uh, without anyone else being able to hear it. Just common sense noise discipline stuff. Um, stuff these things back in here really quick. Making a damn mess in the woods. Yeah, so I know I'm gonna have to be careful about the scanner turning on accidentally in my bag. I need to find a solution for that, but I haven't had it long enough to work something out. Take the floating lid off, and usually underneath here, there's, um, there's a compression strap that puts this front kangaroo pocket over the top, and I'll lash my hoodie, whatever, you know, extra jacket or rain gear I've got under here, so it's secured, um, but I'm wearing the hoodie right now. So inside, kangaroo pocket, which zips down the front. Inside the kangaroo pocket. It's another Tyvek envelope. This is a priority mail one from the post office. It's where I started getting them years ago. I've been using these things for organizing for absolutely ever. They're free, they're tough, they're water repellent. Small notebook, 
couple pens, red and black, for taking notes, um, both on trains and just my thoughts. Camping on low to no dollars with a nondescript cover. I made the cover for this out of Tyvek as well, so it's got a little bit of a water repellent cover on it, not as likely to get fucked up. The book I'm currently reading, which I'll probably finish today before I leave, so I gotta pick something else to take with me. This is All the Pretty Horses by Carmack and Carthy. This works awesome. And this is a schematic for a sword that I've already made once that I'm gonna make again at my friend's Rick's shop. So it's full size, one to one, uh, with notes on um, weight and thickness and balance. So I have, um, I've got photos of that in my phone as well, but it's nice to have a physical copy. It's nice to go analog when you can. I've got maps um, of all the train routes that I'm taking. Um, at the house, but I just, that's a that's a pretty kind of large book, so I took photos of the appropriate company uh, and state maps there in my phone. So uh, with the extra power bank, I shouldn't have to worry about my phone being absolutely dead and not being able to check that. There's a small organizing pocket here, also in the kangaroo pot in the kangaroo pouch. Um, Little sill nylon organizing pocket. In here are an emergency blanket, Mylar emergency blanket, uh, some paracord, a little bit of extra cordage, some tiny zip ties, and some prussics on toggles for using with my, my tarp if if I run out of uh, other options or if the, the cinch mechanism my tarp breaks. And it's nice to have a couple tiny zip ties for stuff like, you know, the watch band. Uh, on my watch fucked up the other day. One of these little retention loops broke, so I replaced it with a piece of zip tie until I can, you know, get a new watch band on order. Pretty damn shatterproof uh, box uh, case for my glasses, since I'm blind as a bat. Extra sil nylon pouch, uh, mostly for dirty clothes. A couple crayons for monikers. Poop bags. Not for pooping, but for stashing stuff. They don't weigh anything. It's nice to have around. Uh, so if you need to stash something and come back and get it, put it in a dog shit bag. I've mentioned this in a previous video, and no one's gonna look in the dog shit bag if it's inside of a bush. If you're in a dodgy city and you throw something in a bush, beware that there might be uh, hypodermic needles in that bush. Phone case, uh, not for carrying on my on my belt like a boomer dad, but for clipping onto the backpack so that I can take footage while walking. And um, another self-defense thing. This is a D20 dice spike tool that I make. It's got a G10 spike drilled into it, Kydex holster, the whole thing's non-metallic. It'll go through metal detectors and it'll definitely go through a person. Uh, I've tested these in organics mediums class. Um, they definitely work and I've had a few testimonials from clients who unfortunately have had to use them out in the world. So yeah. Um, carry a lot of weaponry, but it's kind of my thing. It's what I do for a living. Extra batteries for the flashlight in a go tube, a waterproof tube. There's brand new batteries in the flashlight anyway, but it's nice to have extras. Lots of tiny doodads, and all this stuff adds up as far as weight is concerned. I got a Pelican case for the gimbaled selfie stick slash tripod that I'm using right now, and it looked nice and bright and black and shiny valuable when I got it so I garnet blasted this thing and then painted it to look like trash if I were to set this up against a wall somewhere you might think it was just a, a box for electronics for a switch um, so yeah but pelican case it's waterproof I've got a bandana on the inside for taking up any wiggle room that the electronics have on the inside so they don't rattle damaging themselves or um, just making a bunch of noise and giving me away Here's the collapsible water pouch that I talked about before. This one had little slits built into it, so I added a cinch strap so I can carry it over my shoulder bandolier style. Um, and whenever I get to where I'll be actually catching out, this will be full. I think it's three liters. This one's made by Hydropack, and it's been surprisingly durable. I haven't had any problems with it whatsoever. Um, I thought it would fail, but it hasn't yet. And again, I'm gonna have this full, both my water bottles, I'll usually get a Gatorade um, for electrolyte replacing, but also to piss in. So you have 
you know, somewhere to go when you're on the train. And uh, I'll often get a can of cold brew, like a can of coffee and take that with me. So I've got a treat for the next morning. So lots of liquids and I'll drink out of this first so that if this does fail and I lose the remainder of the water that's in here, then I've still got the water that's in the fairly indestructible clean canteens. Marine Corps issue, waterproof compression bag. This is my extra clothes, uh, shirts, underwear, socks, and uh, a pair of wool long johns. Um, I go for fancy undergarments, so it's smart wool, underlayers, um, darn tough socks, and ex officio brief, uh, boxer briefs, which dry really fast. They're the most comfortable undergarments I've ever encountered. This, I believe, is made by Seal Line, contracted out for the USMC. Um, and they're pretty affordable. This one's been spray painted a very long time ago, so it's a little bit more camo, but they come in a decent color anyway. Uh, you squeeze it and the air comes out of this valve and nothing can go back in. It's a one-way valve, standard dry bag. Got to unstitch things to get to the very bottom. And all my sleeping stuff is at the bottom. Uh, some people don't like, but I kind of like the stuff being down there. So it's, it's the last thing I do every night is get to the bottom of the bag. In here is an inflatable thermarest. I know some people like the, the Z-fold ones or the ones that roll up because you don't have to worry about them getting deflated come, coming into contact with thorns or anything. I know they're fragile, but uh, I carry a full-size uh, inflatable thermarest, just the Scout model. It's fairly thin. And in, inside here as well is um, a mountain hardware bivy sack and I've mentioned that in a previous video. It's gray. It had a bunch of reflective bits on it, like reflective branding. So I got gear tape, gear repair tape. I think it's made by Gear Aid, some black stuff. It's like a sil nylon adhesive and covered all of the reflective bits. Um, also watch out, you might have reflectors on your shoes without even realizing it. And a Sharpie won't cover that. Um, it'll just make it look a little darker in the daylight. But a paint marker, like an acrylic paint marker from the craft store, will cover the reflectors on your shoes, although it might flake off eventually. So watch out for that. You don't want to give your position away just by having standard running shoes on. Um, at this point, I don't wear hiking boots anymore. Uh, I don't even wear boots to work. And I've given up on wearing running shoes. I just wear high top vans uh, whenever it's cold out. That's what I'm wearing right now. Small sleeping bag. It's not made for really cold weather. Uh, that's why I carried uh, long johns with me because at least I can wear those outside of the bag as well. And if it gets really cold out, if I'm inside this, inside the bivy, and in my wool long johns, I'm ready for any weather that October is going to throw at me. There you go, in a compression bag. It's not the compression bag that it came with. I've just gone through a bunch of gear over the years and things get mixed and matched. So um, I think it's a Sierra Designs sleeping bag, but it's in a mountain hardware bag. That's how things go. Rain jacket that I've recently re-waterproofed. And this is my tarp. It's a rain fly made by Eagle's Nest Outfitters. It's made to go over, um, over a hammock. It's a nice color and I like the shape of it. It's not a square. Uh, it's more like a, a long, like an elongated hexagon. And it's got its own built in um, cinch mechanisms at all the six corners. So um, I keep just a few cords on that and I use tent stakes and usually a pole that I can find out in the woods or, uh, or a tree. So I'll tie it to one tree and then the main anchor on the ground is one of these big tent stakes made for the snow. And that's big enough to take on most of the weight going straight from the tree to the ground. And then auxiliary, the other corners out to the sides are these small red aluminum tent stakes. These don't weigh much of anything. And the tarp's got loops already built into it. It doesn't have grommets. It's got like sewn on cloth loops. Um, things treated me really well. And yeah, I've been super happy with it. It doesn't weigh much of anything. I keep that in a mesh bag. It's nice to have a mesh bag or two with you. So if you've got wet gear, you can pack it up in this and at least have it off gas and dry out some by strapping it to the outside of your bag and letting the sun do its job. There you go. So that's my, that's my loadout. I believe that is everything. Um, I mentioned this once before in a previous video, the, the bivy sack comes with one pole that folds into thirds. And I, I worry some about that breaking. So there's a frame sheet in this backpack. It doesn't have, you know, a uh, little aluminum stays. It's got a plastic frame sheet inside this zippered compartment. Um, 
And what I do is I put um, the pole for my bivy down up against that frame sheet in that flat, you know, zippered compartment, wrapped up with a couple of reusable gear with a reusable gear tie, so I don't have to worry about it getting broken because it's up against the the back of the backpack anyway. It's up against the frame sheet, um, and that's that decision has served me pretty well. I've never had these things fail. Um, I have killed a bunch of bivy sacks over the years, um, killed a bunch of tents in various ways, but um, I've never had the poles break because I've always kept them up against the frame sheet. There you go. Um, let me know if you guys have any questions or comments, and I'll see if I can answer them. Um, and I uh, should be heading out of here in the next couple of days uh, whenever I wake up without a sore throat. Y'all take care of yourselves and each other. Peace.